Browsing through my collection of sensors, I found quite a few which deal with measuring of light. Today we will have a look at these sensors, bring them in some order and test them. In the end you should be able to decide which sensor is best for your project. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. In my last video we covered current sensors. There we mainly had to distinguish between DC and AC currents. Today we deal with light, which is more complicated because we have many sorts of light. So we will look at all sensors I have in my boxes. For sure there are much more available. Please comment on your finds. Together we are stronger. The focus is on sensors available on AliExpress and as breakout boards. We will classify the available sensors according to their purpose. And we will test them. In the end you should be able to select the right sensor and know how to use it. When we talk about light, we have to speak about wavelength. In video number 269 we used a spectrometer to visualize the visible and IR light. This sensor captures all wavelength from UV to IR in one scan. Because it is clumsy, relatively expensive and very directional, it's not a useful sensor for our daily projects. But it will be helpful for comparison and understanding. Today's selection covers the following areas. RGB sensors, LUX sensors, UV sensors, IR sensors and proximity and gesture sensors. The first sensors try to detect the color of the light source. The source of the light, by the way, can be active or passive. Active means that the source creates light, like a bulb or an LED, and passive means that the light is reflected. The sensors cannot distinguish between these two light sources. To roughly detect the color of light, it is only necessary to measure at three wavelengths, red, green and blue. This is what these sensors do. In this category I found the following sensors. The TCS 3200 is a programmable color light to frequency converter. Which means it outputs a variable frequency signal and our MCU has to measure the frequency to get the value. A little bit more complicated than just to read an analog value. The sensor consists of 64 diodes, 16 of each value. And the sketch shows us the respective values for red, green, blue and clear. We need 5 pins to connect the chip. Here we see the sensitivity curve of the different photodiodes. In a small test I show you why it is essential to look at such diagrams. If I take an IR diode and illuminate the sensor, all 4 values increase. Not good. They should not react because they are not red, green or blue. If we have a closer look at the diagram from before, we see the reason. All photodiodes have their highest sensitivity in infrared. The supplier should have added an IR filter. But we can fix it and add one typically used in CCTV cameras. It can be switched on and off, which is quite handy. If we switch it off, we see similarly high values in all channels as without it. If we switch it on, these values are much lower. Cool. One thing has to be clear. This sensor is only sensitive in three particular wavelengths. If a light source emits on a wavelength in between, it is probably not seen or detected on two channels. Let's check it out with these four diodes. I first check their real spectrum using the spectrometer. The blue diode has a wavelength of 460, green 520, yellow 590 and red 630 nanometers. So yellow is between red and green. Now let's check the values of the TCS 3200. I did not like the sketches and libraries I found on the internet. This is why I created my own. It reads the time between two pulses using the pulse in function. 
Then we can calculate the frequency and normalize the color values and set the highest value to 100. Like that, it is easier to see if the sensor works. Green is OK. Red is OK. And blue is detected too. Yellow is, as expected, caught in the red and in the green channel, but closer to red. So this sensor works fine and can distinguish differently colored things. It also comes with four white LEDs for illumination. Because we can, we also check their spectrum. They emit a lot of blue. So pay attention if you use them. A white sheet of paper seems to be blue. These Aldi LED panels, by the way, have a completely different spectrum. Similar sensors from the same company are the two I2C sensors, the TCS3414 and the TCS34725. Both have four channels with four ADCs and an I2C interface. This is easy to use and faster than the frequency signal of the TCS3200. We also get a library and a sketch for both. The most significant difference between the two is the built-in IR filter for the TCS34725. However, the TCS3414 is much more expensive than the other two. So the TCS34725 seems to be the better choice. An interesting alternative is the ISL29125. It also has an I2C interface and a built-in IR filter. It has no clear channel. Typical applications for the last three sensors are color correction in display backlights or other colored illuminations. So they should be suitable for many of our color experiments. I'm not sure which sensors are also suitable for outdoor usage in full sun. The ISL29125 for sure needs a strong ND filter because it is too sensitive for bright sun. By the way, I printed these small pieces to stick the IR filter to the sensor for my tests. You also get many other IR filters because they are widely used. Now we leave the color and go to the illuminance, which is measured in lux. It should show the light intensity as perceived by the human eye. This is why it measures with a standard human brightness perception. Such sensors are widely used in photography to determine the aperture and time for taking pictures. I have here a cheap lux meter to compare the sensors. And I have an additional plan. Last year I tried to steer our awning using openweathermap.org. I wanted to extend the awning if a lot of sunlight is expected to keep the inside temperature down. Unfortunately, I was not successful, because the weather data was not exact enough. And my wife made quite a few jokes about that fact and my engineering capabilities. This is why I have to fix it before this summer. A connected lux meter should do the job. I found the following selection of LUX sensors in my boxes. A BH1750, a TSL2561 and a TSL2591. To be complete, I also add an LDR and a phototransistor as a rudimentary LUX meter. Let's start with the BH1750. It is a simple photodiode, an ADC and an I2C interface. The spectral response, as expected, covers the visible wavelength. Its range is from 1 to 65,535 lux. What does this mean? Here I have a table with lux values of typical situations. According to this table, this sensor should work in daylight till the dusk. But how does it compare with my lux meter? I try three different light levels and you can compare the readings. There is a clear correlation. I do not know which one is right, but I tend to believe the Unity device is closer. Keep also in mind that the difference compared to the possible light levels we saw in the table before is small. Next, I try the TSL2561. It has no IR filter, but a second channel for the IR elimination. 
Also here you see a difference and a clear correlation. The TSL2591 is a similar chip. If we look at the homepage of AMS, which bought Teos in 2011, we see that both should not be used anymore for new designs, but they are still sold in different versions on different platforms. LDRs or light dependent resistors are cheap and straightforward parts to detect light levels. Even cheaper is to subscribe to the channel or to like the video. But it makes a big difference for me. Anyway, together with a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor it produces different voltages if it's covered or not. You only need to connect it to an analog input and program a threshold in your sketch. Please keep in mind that the resistance is high when the light level is low. LDRs are not precise nor is their range big. The same applies to phototransistors. I have here one with an IR filter. The diagram is the same as with the LDR and its reaction is also somehow similar. If you want to detect IR only, the phototransistor with an IR filter is the better choice. For example, I built a small device for my brother to supervise the error LED of its heating system. As soon as it is on, the ESP8266 sends a message and he can react before the house becomes cold. Now we come to a particular part of the spectrum, ultraviolet. Here I have the ML8511 UV sensor. It has an analog output. By the way, here we see something also other breakout boards use. They offer a 3.3 and a 5 volt pin. I used an ESP32 for all tests, so I connected the 3.3 volt pin. The ML8511 also is a straightforward sensor. It just contains a UV photodiode and an amplifier, and it measures UVA and UVB light. The output voltage without UV light is 1 volt. I use a special UV flashlight for the test. You see that my overhead light does not have a lot of UV content. The voltage is 1 volt. As soon as I move my flashlight closer to the sensor, we see an increase in the output voltage. Also here you need to use an analog input of a microcontroller. Why detect UV? Because it would be interesting to see how the UV level behaves around our homes. Like that you can decide how much sun cream you have to apply before you leave your house, for example. On the other side of the spectrum is infrared light. It is widely used by makers and you find a few videos on this channel about this topic. As we saw, some of the above sensors are sensitive to IR. Without the filter, they can also be used to detect IR. Besides that, I want to mention a special IR sensor, the TSSOP1838. It is used for IR remotes and its speciality is that it detects only modulated infrared. In this case, it only detects IR which is switched on and off with a frequency of 38 kHz. This is done to prevent that pure sunlight can switch your TV on. The next sensors are a little special. Proximity and gesture sensors. I include them here because they also measure light and one even has a built-in RGB sensor. I found an APDS9960 and an AP3216C. The APDS9960 is quite complicated compared with our sensors from before. It has 8 channels and one LED. I could imagine it fits into home automation systems for contactless switches. It can sense proximity and gestures can detect the amount of light in a room and even give you information about the color. It has an UV and an IR filter. And it features an I2C interface. A very cool sensor. Let's check it out. First, the colors. It detects the right colors, but if you have a closer look, the separation is not as good as with the true color sensors from before, especially between green and blue. Next we try proximity. 
you have to go quite close to get some readings. So it is good for a switch behind glass, for example. It also should be able to detect different directions of your hand at a distance of around 15 centimeters or 6 inches. First I was very frustrated with the sensor until I discovered that the SparkFun example works with interrupts and I had to adapt the sketch to the ESP32. As usual I leave a link in the description to my sketches. After I fixed it, it works fine. All in all, a lovely sensor, as the English would say. The AP3216C only has proximity and ambient light. It also connects to I2C. Please do not forget to power the LED using a 220 ohms resistor between the 3.3 volts and the LED pin. Also here, the distance for detection is rather small. These were the sensors I found in my boxes. I'm sure there are many others available. Maybe you have a favorite? Please share it in the comments. Summarized, we tested various sensors which detect light. All sensors are specialized on particular wavelength. One detected UV light. Quite a few measured the visible light. Because the phototransistors or photodiodes used on the chips seem to be quite sensitive also for infrared, either the chip has a built-in IR filter or we have to add one. Otherwise, we can get completely wrong readings. Because the light levels are very different indoors and outdoors, we either have to select sensors which have a high dynamic range or we have to adapt them to the use case with dark glasses. For color recognition, the TCS34725 is probably the best choice for me. The LUX sensors simulate the light sensitivity of an eye to show us the brightness as we see it. For elementary on-off applications, light-dependent resistors or phototransistors are a cheap and a good choice. The APDS9960 gesture and proximity sensor worked fine and detected gestures as well as sensed RGB light. Proximity detection also works fine on a short distance. The AP3216C is slightly cheaper than the APDS9960, so go for it if you do not need RGB or gesture. One sensor not covered here was the VL53L0X distance sensor. It was covered in an earlier video and it is very good in detecting proximity, also on longer distances up to one meter. It uses laser light. Most sensors had an I2C interface and I found libraries to use them. Only the TCS3200 uses frequency, a very special interface, and maybe a little outdated. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.